Hey humans, how's it going? Susan Ruth here. Thanks for listening to another episode of Hey Human Podcast. This is episode 116, and this episode came about because my dear friend Natalie Kilgore, who is in PR, uh, she and I were chatting, and she said, hey, you know, would you be interested in talking to people at the Cirque du Soleil? Because she knows people that were doing the PR for the Cirque du Soleil when they were in Nashville. And I said, uh, yes, absolutely, please, please do that. So <laughs> she connected me to uh, Sherry. I met Sherry and Nicole and uh, got to go and interview Maxwell Batista and Alexander, also known as Sasha, at least to me, uh, Udenstev uh, from the Cirque du Soleil, from the uh, uh, Corteo performance that they did in Nashville. Uh, I was gifted with two tickets to see the performance that night. It was breathtaking and spellbinding and uh, it was incredible. I brought my best friend Ellen Severe and uh, she has a better camera phone so she took some cool pictures. I'll post those up of course with the uh, with the social media stuff but as always the links page is going to have video and, and information about Cirque du Soleil uh, in general so definitely check that out too. They're going to be touring all over the United States and in Canada with this particular show. Uh, I wrote down the dates, Jacksonville, Florida, August 1st through 5th, Charlotte, North Carolina, August 8th through 12th, Louisville, August, that's in Kentucky, Louisville, uh, August 15th through 19th. So if you are around those areas or, you know, just go to the Search of Soleil website and, and see when they're going to be performing in your town and go see it. And of course, they're always in Vegas. Um, and I highly recommend the, them all, really. I don't think you can go wrong. It's all beautiful. It's all incredible. Um, yeah, uh, the story is uh, that I saw is uh, about a clown, and it's his funeral, and he is imagining his funeral. It's very uh, mystical and and romantic and beautiful and funny, and uh, a little bit darkness here and there. It's it was it's really extraordinary. Uh, Sasha <laughs> is an acrobat and an actor and a juggler and holy cow, the, the things that these people can do, it's, it's mind boggling to me. It's really something to behold. Um, so yeah, I sat down with, with Maxwell and Sasha and they were so kind. I, they didn't have a lot of time that day, obviously, because they're running around trying to make this show happen. And so the fact that they sat down with me uh, so gracious, so lovely, and I really appreciate it. And most especially, I appreciate getting to see the show that night. Um, usual stuff, uh, social media, Hey Human Podcast. You know how to reach me, Susan, at heyhumanpodcast.com. I wanted to mention that I was asked to be on a podcast called Philosophy in My Sweet Role. And uh, Houston asked me to, to be on the show. Uh, and I did. I said yes. And then he said, all right, this is what the show's about. It's about philosophy. And he uh, is a, he's, um, sorry, I wanted to talk about Jesus and Christianity and spirituality and faith and all those things. And that's a topic I enjoy talking about. So I thought, why not? So check that out. Philosophy in my sweet role uh, podcast in the podcast places. Um, what else? Last plug before I head to Seattle for my big music show. It's August 6th, The Triple Door. Doors at 6, show at 7.30. The Triple Door is a gorgeous venue in Seattle, Washington. If you are in the vicinity, please go and say hi to me and check out the show. Tickets you can get through my website, SusanRuth.com. You can get from The Triple Door. You can go to tickets.thetripledoor.net. Lots of places, so definitely do that if you are so inclined. Um, yeah, so a reminder that if you shop on Amazon, if you go to the Amazon portal on heyhumanpodcast.com and do shopping like you normally would through that portal, it helps support Hey Human, and that's greatly appreciated. That's, that's pretty much all I have for this week. Some really good stuff coming up. And as always, thank you for listening and keep on and yay and all the good stuff and all the happiness and all the love. All right, here we go. All right, everyone.
Max, Sasha, Sasha. welcome hey. to Hey Human Podcast. Hey, thank you for having us here. Uh, Cirque du Soleil, it's very exciting. Yeah, I think so, yeah. We are super excited to be here in Nashville, so uh, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a good moment for us. The first time I saw Cirque du Soleil, I was telling you, I saw Mystere and I thought, oh, wow. and I was transfixed. I, I didn't want to leave my seat after the performances. I just wanted to be there for the rest of my life watching. <laughs> it's so beautiful. The good thing is that uh, you see a very different uh, style of uh, type of shows that we have, actually, because on Cirque du Soleil, we have the resident shows, like uh, both of the ones that you saw in Vegas, where we'll be the theater, we adapt the theater for that show. Or we, ha we also have the big top shows where we travel with the tent. And we travel usually from 80 to 90 containers, and we set up uh, everything that mm -hmm. we need. This one, it's, it, we need to go uh, to places where we have a big space uh, in order to be able to set up everything. And we have arena shows like Corte where we travel with about 21 tracks. There's still a good amount of, of the tracks and, and material. But um, this one, we're able to go to other cities where we wouldn't create chaos with 90 containers arriving all at the same time. So uh, Corteo, uh, it, it's, it used to be under the big top, and now it's uh, performing arena. So you're going to start with a really good one for a touring show. Did you have to slim it down in order for it to be here at Bridgestone? or Not at all. You, you could encompass the whole... No, not at all. Yeah. Actually, the, this arena, it's really nice for us to be playing at uh, because it's a huge arena. It's new, it's modern, it's... Uh, Everyone, when they arrived there, they were like, whoa, it's a super good place. It's, it's, it's exciting. Uh, uh, on, on both uh, backstage uh, uh, and on stage, uh, I think that we have a really nice place to be uh, mm -hmm. performing. If all the places uh, that we go were like this, we would be always happy. That's good. Yeah, as an artist, there's, well, I'm not complaining, but it's nice to have a big arena. Yeah. Having a big, uh, big backstage, yeah. it's a privilege because you, uh, there's space to work out, there's space to juggle, mm -hmm. to do things. Versus small arena, we're 51 artists and sometimes we're clashing to each other. It's nice to have a big arena. Yeah. So 1984, the Cirque du Soleil was founded and in Montreal and then it just it exploded. People went, oh my God, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen or did it take a while, a slow burn? Well, I don't think it would start just right away exploding everything. No, eh? Yeah, nice. no, actually, uh, when it first started, we had a group of uh, 20 street performers that they were putting together a show. Uh, and uh, since then, uh, they started to grow, 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 and we started to create shows after shows. Uh, the, our touring shows first started uh, in Canada and US only. And then we started to create new shows and we'll be able to go to new uh, places, continents, and we'll be able to explore pretty much everywhere in the world. Uh, but there are still many different places that we haven't been yet. For example, right now we're going to new markets like India. We have a new show that uh, is just starting now and uh, going to India. They're going to be in Mumbai and then they're going to be traveling around. So there are still new places to go. But back uh, as everything started, uh, we had this group of 20 street performers that were in total between a technical team and everyone helping to put uh, uh, to make the show happen together. We had a, about 70 people and today we have uh, over 4,000 employees where 1,500 uh, artists in over 20 different productions and special events. Plus, we have our team working out in our headquarters in Montreal, and uh, everyone else are working on uh, being part of our, all of our touring shows and resident shows. So it's a big family. It's a huge family. When you go to places like Mumbai, for example, do you try and incorporate the culture that is therein, or do you want to bring new culture and new ideas to those places? On all of our shows, uh, we have... Uh, many different disciplines and things, cultures, uh, things that uh, we bring to make the show happen. When you see a show, they're not talking one language. Uh, on Corteo, you hear our characters uh, speaking many different languages. Mm -hmm. The main character, for example, they're, they're a little bit of Italian, of, of, of uh, Spanish, of um, yeah. English, French, all mixed up. So this way you're able to understand. But some of our shows, we don't have people speaking at all. They make sound, they find different ways to communicate with people. This way, uh, everyone that is watching the show, they find a way to uh, connect themselves. So where they're from, doesn't matter where from, doesn't matter uh, what do you do, uh, what is your background, you're gonna be able to understand something on the show and you don't have to talk for that. Uh, for this specific project, we have uh, um, 
acts that are inspired in the India culture and in this case uh, there's a very special link for that show that will be brought for uh, for this new project I'm super excited about it but Corteo for example uh, there is a mix of uh, Italian more European French culture mm -hmm. all mixed together on this uh, and everyone when they come to the show it doesn't matter if you're from the US from Brazil in my case Oh, I don't know, but whichever country you're from, you find something that you, you identify yourself, you see yourself on that show. Because even beyond that, on this on this show specifically, we have human beings on stage. So characters like Sasha, you'll be, you see him screaming and making noises a, a lot on the stage. I love to, to hear him screaming on stage and uh, not screaming, but making noises and uh, noise it's super fun. Or noise of happiness or yes. noise of... And, uh, and having fun because uh, Sash is always telling us that he, he's always having fun uh, beyond of doing his own character on stage. Well, I personally think everyone should go that way. As if you don't have fun on stage, you either tired or you better quit doing mm. what you do. That's, that's my personal opinion. Sasha, where are you from? I'm from Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan. And where are you from? Next? I'm from Brazil. Brazil. So when I saw the, the performances that I saw, what I loved so much, and you spoke to this, is when you are hearing all these languages and all the music, and sometimes the music, the words are made up. It's not even, it's just intonations and sound. And, and in that moment, I find myself wanting everyone on the planet to hear it because in that moment, I think, see, this is exactly what it is. This is what it really is. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter what language you speak. It doesn't matter what you look like. You have, you know, crazy makeup on or strange outfits or you could be flying from the sky, you know. But it's such a grounding, um, encompassing feeling to be a part of the audience and to be... I love it so much. It's really beautiful. We can even go beyond that because uh, you mentioned that the, I would say the first things that we would notice that it's the music and costume and things that happen on stage. But uh, there are so many things behind that. Um, there are thought that's so much thought put together to make sure that you're paying attention to the right detail. For example, when you're watching the chandelier act, the girls, uh, we have three chandeliers on uh, above the stage. They have someone singing, the main singer. He's singing a beautiful song in Italian and French mixed uh, lyrics. And then uh, the main character at some point, he's kind of talking and saying the name of the girls because they represent the loves that he had on his life. But there are a few moments that they're, they're gonna be doing their tricks on each chandeliers. But there are three big chandeliers, too much light. There are four people plus the characters on the side, the singers, like you don't know where to look at. But then when one of them is doing a specific trick that we must pay attention to that trick, we, we are supposed to pay attention to that trick, the lights change. But it changed slightly in a way that uh, we are lighting up just that chandelier, and you won't notice when the light is smoothly changing. So suddenly you have lights on all three of them, and then it's changing a little bit. You have light only on her, one of the girls is going up, doing her trick. When she touches the floor, the lights will change and will go to the next one. And you, without notice, will just change your face. I know that I'm doing faces here; people it's won't okay. be able to see it. But you'll be you'll be changing uh, the. The, uh, the place you're looking at, it's like, mm -hmm. yes, it's like, oh, you look to the other chandelier and the next one, and then you look to the other one, and you don't notice that we are taking your attention from one place to the other, mm -hmm. not only, we find different ways to communicate with people, so the speaking is one of them, the music, but everything that's happening in there, they are there for a reason, mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, you understand, and we don't want people to be noticed that as well, we want people to feel what you just described, to disconnect mm -hmm. themselves of whatever's happening in the outside world, and um, be there, stuck in that moment. So the light is its own dancer. Yes. Well, light is a big part of it. Yeah, talking about the tension of doing something, in our show, on our stage, there is not even like a little centimeter to hide yourself. You, you're always visible on stage. Once you step on stage, you're always visible. You always have to be in character. That's how you call experience. That's how you call being professional. Mm. If you if you went off your character, that's it. You, it's, you can see, audience will see. Even if you look at like man action, you still have to do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. so, how did you come to be a part of it? Oh, well, it's a long story. It's okay. <laughs> well, I did, I did power tumbling, okay. if you know what it is. I do it's, know power tumbling, yeah. Yeah, for 16 years, I think. I was uh, the national team of Kazakhstan for 10 years. I did four World Cup competitions. 
So you started young. I started you when would I was have to, I guess. six or seven years okay. old. Mm -hmm. That's it. I count that already. It's been like 27 years of jumping or 26, too much. So yeah, uh, me and my coach, we decided because, well, in Kazakhstan, back in Kazakhstan, it's hard to compete and actually get money because it's not an Olympic sport. And he told me, well, we can, we can try, you know, to make videotape and send it to Cirque. So we sent it and I still did competition. And like two weeks later, a week later, they called me and they invited me to do general formation in Montreal. My coach was not really happy because he, he, he would lose me, mm -hmm. as a, but he let me go and the world started back to summer 2007, July of 2007. Wow. Yeah, I did a, create a, a formation for Teeterboard Act. Um, I got a contract for that act. How did you uh, have to change, let's say, your diet or your uh, mental... You uh, know, talking to about diet? No, we don't have to, as long as you stay in the shape. Yeah. You, you can eat whatever you, you want. You can eat whatever you want. You, all have to, yeah. you must burn thousands of calories in a performance. We, yeah, you, we do. Yeah. We do. What is your favorite of what you do? What do you like the most? So I started doing teeterboard and sear wheel act. I like that. That's the, yeah, that, that, the seesaw board, yeah. thing? Seesaw. Yeah. I've been doing that for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. But then I injured my ankle. Mm -hmm. Then I recover and there was a spot of trumpet attacks in our show. And I was lucky enough to actually get that position okay. and being a character that close uh, calls Clownagust, which also fit to me. It's a clown, it's a, a character that fits me. I, I don't have to change what I do. It's what I'm doing in the life. Yeah. I'm doing the same thing on stage. Okay. Being myself, You're happy, clown. silly, <laughs> lost, it, lost in a way. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. It, it's nice to do different things. And I also start juggling mm -hmm. and I fall in love with it, with it and I'm uh, doing backup act now, the Diablo on stage. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned that there's so many of you, and you become a, a big family. But what happens when you're like, oh, I can't stand that clown? Friction. <laughs> yeah. We call that friction. Uh, well, it's. Mm, How do you resolve those kind of conflicts when you're traveling that, together? That, and yeah, that's why we have some time off, which is yeah. ten weeks work, two weeks off. You cool down, you come back. And you're happy again. Two weeks on, two weeks off? No, no, we have 10 weeks, ten uh, weeks, ten weeks on. on. Yeah, yeah, 10 weeks on. It helps, on. but uh, it's like in, in, in the life, no? Yeah. You have this friction everywhere. Sure. Outside, in, like inside your family, yeah. you just learn how to deal with it. There, but the trust level that you must have to have with each other because you have to have that. you're no, hanging by threads. No matter <laughs> what relationship you have, once you step on stage, you forget that. Yeah. If you have friction, if you are angry to someone, you just get rid of that when yeah. you're on stage. You cannot, yeah. That's how you call it again, experience and being professional. When you were young, did you look to Cirque and think, oh, I want to do that someday, or was it just happenstance that you came to do Back it? when I was in sport, no, I didn't. No. I just did tumbling and nothing else. I just wanted to see sport and compete and winning, nothing else. Mm -hmm. But when I was like a teenager age, and I, well, I heard like about Cirque from my friends, I, no, I was not my, Dream, to be honest. Yeah. But then I start to like it. And, and now it's your life. It's my life now. What happens it's, when you retire from the Cirque du Soleil? What do you, is it, well, they give you an elephant know, when, and yeah. send you on your way? <laughs> when That'd people ask me, what are you going to do when you're off stage? Not sure yet because I'm still doing it and I will do that. You do it for a long time. What is the retirement age of a, of a performer? Oh, it's again personal. If you're oh. an, acro an acrobat, if you're a juggler, if you're a clown, oh, if you're okay. a singer, depends. And out like you know we're all different yeah some acrobats can be jumping until 45 50 years there, there is a there are a few examples uh, that are very different uh, for instance uh, i was just working on another show called varakai where there we had uh, one of the musicians a drummer he was he was on that show for 15 years the, the complete lifetime of that show and he never missed one single performance which was even more interesting about him but uh, he was there for the entire show as a drummer. Uh, on Cordell, for example, we have we we have the one of the coaches. He used to be on stage on mm -hmm. Cordell under the big dog, and then years later he became a coach. Uh, usually, people when they're in sports, they might be doing uh, participating in competitions, and later they become trainers, coaches, and uh, show the the give the that the training. Uh, uh, 
show new skills to new people and like teach people. Yeah. So um, it, makes the same can happen here. So Sasha, he has a very good experience on stage, not only doing acrobatic performances, but acting uh, and participating of uh, the recreation process of Corteo. He used to work on a, on a different show as well. So I would say that this is the best example of flexibility that you see here in our artists, that uh, they bring something about themselves He's an actor. He's an acrobat. He's uh, he's all, all the, the the good match, the, like the perfect kid for us. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, one day this guy will be giving his knowledge to to more people and teaching people. Yes, so for example, Cirque du Soleil versus traditional Russian circus. I'm nothing against Russian circus, but normally, there you if you are an acrobat, you're an acrobat. That's what you do. Nothing else beside that. Mm -hmm. Here, you it's not enough. It's literally not enough. You need to be able to even sing, to dance, act. So you, with years, you learn that, and you eventually you wanna feel like sharing with people. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe that I'm gonna be able to share my knowledge eventually. Absolutely. So as a, as a whole, the entire troupe, do they come together to create every story, or is that are there particular people that write the story and then? The process takes about three years from the moment that we decide to create a new show where uh, we come up with the main concept. Mm -hmm. And then we start the process where we get people specialized on, on different things, uh, the designers. For example, we have the creator of the show and director, and then we start to bring the designers. Stage designer, makeup designer, uh, costume designer, sound, lighting, uh, everyone that must be involved in the creation process of, of that show for that concept. Uh, once we have uh, we are halfway through this process, we start to bring the artists. Okay, we want this or that act incorporated on this show. So we bring the artists and they participate on the creation process, uh, bringing their skills. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It's like mm, this act doesn't look good uh, for that moment, or that act doesn't fit for that. And then uh, once that uh, the guys uh, they are trained enough and good to do to be performing that act, they start to incorporate the costume. And then they need to adjust the light because one of the guys, one of the jugglers, they'll be playing, but the light it's right in front of him and it's on the on his face. Oh no, the light there doesn't work for that trick. We must put the light on the side. Or we can have the light here while he's doing in a specific trick, but for the next three seconds of that trick, we need to just change the light quickly so he's able to do that. The same for the girls when they're the chandeliers. There are some moments that the light cannot be facing some way when they're doing a trick or the light cannot change until they're touching the floor for the safety. Mm. So this process of the act uh, must be created uh, thought and create uh, doing the, the creation process where they're going to be putting all the pieces together okay this work this doesn't work or the costume oh that costume it's working no that one maybe doesn't work because uh, he's so not able enough. to stretch enough yeah. or it doesn't uh, look good doesn't like you you know and then they need to change the type of the material the costume adapt something so this whole process of creation adaptation and readaptation to the final uh, project that we have it takes about two years and sometimes even more for Quartel we first had in 2005, but then 2015, uh, we finished the, the Big Top Tour. And then for about two years, we we're thinking, we we're thinking of studying early, how are we going to bring the show to an arena? And then we had to think, how can we set up a stage like this in only one day, but everything apart in only four hours, like we do here, and be able to fit in 21 trucks and go to the next place? It's insane. It is. So this part, uh, and uh, how are we going to be able to... Uh, keep the costumes in good condition. So the costumes that, that Sasha uses, for example, it can last between six months and two years because uh, just like our normal clothes that we use every day, he's using his costumes every day and he's jumping and doing crazy things and we constantly need to be doing a new one or his shoes must be painted every two weeks or every week because mm -hmm. just like our shoes, it can scratch and he's doing some crazy things on stage that you don't even see. Besides, we need to think about their safety as well. The shoes, the the bottom of the shoes cannot be uh, wasted. Uh, the, the the rubber because it gets slippery, so it's not safe enough. Or, uh, so we need to be uh, readapting the shoes and re or making a new shoes. So every night when he goes on stage, he knows that he can focus on his act, and we have all this team backstage mm -hmm. that is taking care of all these details. How many hours a week do you train, Sasha? I'm personally, or yeah, like you personally. Yeah. Well, like good eight to to ten hours. 
A week. Yeah. No, 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 a day. A day. So including shows. That's that's like two shows a day. I spend like twelve hours a day yeah. on site Be- because I'm not just jumping, as I said. You do all those other things. So I, you have to. You must do your conditioning to keep your knees, ankles, shoulders in the shape. Beside that, juggling, trampoline act, a bit of acting, a bit of stretching. That mm-hmm. takes time. How old is the youngest member of the troupe? We have 23, I believe. How many members you said? No, no, the youngest. Ah, oh. the youngest, uh, 22. 22, yes. Yeah, 20 years. Mm-hmm. And the oldest, it's uh, a bit over 60. I, I joined Cortel when I was 20, back then. Yeah. Yeah, but now 22. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, but are, the oldest? There's, there's, no, has there ever been younger than that? In the on, the, on this show, uh, uh, I don't think so, but it in other shows, you know, she was 18. Have, she was oh, eight. yeah, that's we true, had a that's girl, true. actually. So if you're under your age, now you cannot have be under your age. We we no longer have. Yeah. Uh, we we used to have a uh, uh, under 18 years old uh, then performers, but uh, it's difficult to keep uh, this lifestyle for them because they had to be uh, studying, mm-hmm. doing home no, it's, it's not even that because you used the, to, the you, law. The law used to have like sort of babysitting, not babysitting, someone in charge for you off yeah. off. Yeah, like off stage. That makes sense. Yeah, like they do in film and TV. Yeah, so yeah, th- yeah. They need but to do homeschooling, and then at night they need to be performing. And uh, in some places they cannot be performing to certain time. Yeah, we also need to have someone traveling with them, and uh, it, it it's uh, the logistic behind that. It's so complex mm-hmm. that uh, it uh, is not for every type of show that uh, uh, we're able to keep. Uh, but also remember show. myself being twenty, I feel well maybe because of experience. Probably because of that, I feel way more comfortable being on stage. The way you're thinking, the way you see, it's like football player. Where you're young, you don't see where to, you know, send the ball. It's also using your brain on stage. It's not just hey, I do my backflip or yeah. double back. It's not. It's, it's not just that. Yeah. As it's wisdom well It's like work with people, communicate with people. So mm-hmm. being 18, it's in <laughs> my in my opinion, it's a little bit too early. It's too young. Mm-hmm. Do you get nervous when you're going to start a new, uh, new tumble week? or yeah, yeah. I mean just a new trick? Um, trick. It's got to be. And you just push all that out of your. We brain. don't call that nervous. It's a bit of excitement. Excitement. It's, yeah. Okay. Nervous, like having like, again, I, I I used to compare going on stage, even like after like two weeks off, you have this adrenaline, nice like butterflies, yeah, mm-hmm. or like competition, like. World Cup, when you just raise your hand and you jump once and that's it. Either You either win or lose. It's different, but in a sense, it's, it's, it's nice. It's a nice feeling. It's not being nervous. It's being adrenaline, I would call it. Versus competition, you're actually nervous. Mm. And for me, someone asked me the other day, how you take your like, shit together, I'm sorry to say no, that. You it's can just, say anything yeah, on this yeah, show. Like, again, <laughs> competition helped me to, like, to train and you like you're nervous and just and go and do what you need we need to do yeah i i'm glad that i did sport it helped me because sometimes doing premiere especially being a juggler doing the diablo if you're nervous it's like a snowball you drop and you're gonna continue mm-hmm. dropping mm-hmm. you need to because some people cannot deal with it mm-hmm. what I do you do to relax then so how do you relax when you're done with all this stuff and you get your two weeks off what do you do ah uh, well I don't know, sightseeing, eating, like... Do you get to I, see I, much I, of the I, cities that you go to? Yeah, we do. I like acting, uh, like, day self, doing things, seeing things. Yeah. How well, about you? Some people different. Some people like to sleep. Some people going home. Some people... Yeah, well, when I do have the time, I like to go around as well. But uh, mostly when we have the two weeks off, uh, working, yeah. I do love to travel around for mm. me. I almost never go back home. I'm always going somewhere else. It's nice. It's a privilege to to work and travel and get yeah. to see things. See, it. I imagine you see really fantastical things in your travels because you get to go all over the world. And we well, I I do. Yeah, yeah. So because some people again, when people get like tired of like seeing things on two weeks off, mm-hmm. it, in my opinion, it's time to settle down and just because once you're losing this, it, it means you are done. And I think uh, we grow up a lot as human beings because we meet we see so many places and we meet so many different people Mm -hmm. we learn to be more open Uh, it's like doing an exchange and uh, yeah I think this is an exchange 
a, a little bit more intense for us because we never stop. We're always on the road, so people ask, oh, "Where do you live?" I live where my two where twenty my suitcases, yeah. where my suitcases are. I have two suitcases, and that's it. And it it is literally that. We're not just saying that, you know, yeah. as a cliche. Uh, but the fact that uh, we are always in a different, every week we're in a different place, uh, meeting different people. Uh, we learn a lot about many different people and places, and I think it opened up our head. Uh, I think it's the it's best thing in the world for a human being to be everywhere. It is, but it's pretty tough. Yes. When people think, hey, you're, you're just having so much fun. Yes, we do. But f- first, we work for that, because we still need to work. And it's not easy, because mm-hmm. you, you, you're consistently traveling. It's, it's nice for a month, too. But then, if if it's not for you, it's not for you. Yeah. You just. You probably figure that out pretty quickly. You yes. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> and then you then, then you get grumpy and then you start being annoying. <laughs> but uh, there are some people that they start uh, the giant uh, terrain life for a while and uh, they're like, okay, I'll stay here for <clears throat> two years and maybe live, and go for new projects. There are some people that they indeed they do that. There are some people they end up staying ten years or even more. So it, it really depends on where you are and in, in which stage of your life you are with yourself. And uh, if okay, maybe this is still good for you, or maybe not. Maybe you still want to keep working for Cirque du Soleil, but you don't want to keep traveling. So we can move for the resident shows, or we can move for the, our headquarters in Montreal. Mm-hmm. So in Cirque du Soleil, we have a hundred different posi- types of positions. So it doesn't matter what you do. There's something that for sure you're gonna find. Uh, to what be. brought you to the Cirque from Brazil? How did you? For me, uh, I saw Cirque du Soleil uh, about uh, over ten years ago. Actually, I saw a show on TV, and uh, months later we had a that there was a show that was going to Brazil. And I went to see it. It was Alegria. And I got super excited, and uh, for some reason, when I went to see the show, I saw people uh, working uh, there, not only on stage, because I love everything that's happening on the stage, but I have a special love for everything that's happening on backstage. Mm-hmm. When I was a kid, I used to rent a DVD, for example. The first thing I used to see was the behind the scenes part of it, Bef- even before the movie, because for me, it was amazing. So I always loved to, to learn things about backstage. And when I saw that there was a chance that I could be working there, I was like, well, I want to look into that. So I started working as a local, and one show that came uh, to my city. And then one year later, another show came, and I worked with them and started to follow. Is is still as a local. And then after I moved to Sao Paulo, which is a big city, I'm from Brasilia, uh, which is a country inside it. And I moved to a big city in my country, and I started to get more experience, and then I joined up uh uh, the company later and uh, here I am so for Warriors. me it's a dream job yeah. uh, I always wanted to be here and uh, I think I'm really lucky to be able to work with these people that are s- super talented as well as and, we are so it's also an exchange in a way so uh, I, it's it's something that I should be grateful every day yeah for. I bet there are there a lot of um, unions that are made within the company like marriages and and births and all this kind of thing because you have a family that's that tight with so many people it can happen like uh like any other place you know when you're at school you might meet someone or whichever job you have you might just find someone there that uh you end up uh, with that person now in some of the shows you do have people that end up uh, being married or we have kids uh Mm -hmm. coming uh, you know um, uh, born in a from a as a result of that relationship, uh, <laughs> when this show used to be at the big top, we had uh, lots of kids. I don't remember by head now. Like 17 but or even more. Yes, we had quite a good amount of yeah. kids that uh, were born on tour. Back really? then, when it used to be, we used to have a school. Yeah. Oh, where you taught the acrobatics and all that kind of stuff, you mean? Or a no, school, no, 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 school? The actual school. Oh, okay. Yeah. For the kids and stuff, yeah. yeah. Now we, we, yeah, because uh, when we had uh, younger performers or the uh, performers, uh, uh, kids as well on tour they used to be on, on the school uh, before yeah. so very cool all right before so this will come out this episode will come out on august 2nd mm-hmm. so where were you where, where in the world will you be um after that so that we we'll still will be in the u.s uh, we will be traveling between u.s and canada mm-hmm. for the next uh, uh year okay. uh, next year you said it's going to be next year august no, August this is coming. Oh, well, next week. Okay. Next week. Oh. Next, next week we'll be in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll be heading after uh, from Jacksonville uh, to uh, 
Charlotte in North Carolina, Indianapolis, we we visit Duluth, but then uh, we have a two weeks break and then we go to Canada and Mm -hmm. but we'll be back, we go to California, we go in between both countries. I'll put links on the on heyhumanpodcast.com that'll link to where you guys are so that Mm -hmm. people can find it. Max, Sasha, thank you so much for your time. I don't want to take up too much of it. I know it's a busy day for you. Um, thanks for being on Hey Human. It's fun. Anytime. Thank you. Thank you for coming and enjoy the show. Thank you. I'm so excited. Bye, everybody.